We here in Pale Eye, we're kind of at the northern edge of the last of the small dairy farms here in Wisconsin, and we're super lucky to have two of the farmers be our neighbors. One of the Fisherdale Holsteins, which is run by the Sarbacher family. So the Sarbacher family, I think they're a fourth generation dairy farm. Been here in the Pale Eye region for uh, I think 90 years. And then Breezy View Dairy Farm, which is owned by the Eichelkrauts, They've been on this same land and on this same farm for I think 110 years. I think they're a sixth generation dairy farm. So it feels great and exciting to be able to help provide another revenue stream, another product form for these farmers that are you know, doing so much to sustain dairy here in southern Wisconsin. I'm Nick Mink and I'm one of the co-owners of Seven Acre Dairy Company. And I have spent the entirety of my career working in food, food policy and food business, and mostly doing things with food to try to better connect consumers and producers, to try to build food systems that are fairer for the people that harvest food. Also trying to build food companies and brands that like really inspire consumers and eaters to kind of either change their habits or think about food a little bit differently. So I spent some time doing food policy in Alaska, spent some time doing food policy in Illinois, Indiana, launched a seafood company in 2009 called Sick of Salmon Shares, ran that until the pandemic, and then had the chance to purchase this amazing old dairy factory on the Sugar River in Pale Eye, Wisconsin, and to kind of change direction a little bit from seafood to dairy. Really, we wanted to use this dairy factory as kind of a vehicle for a new food company, specifically a dairy company. But in the process of doing that and making connections with farmers here in Paoli and Montrose and talking to Chef Ben Hunter and talking to the farmers themselves, like found this really unique opportunity yeah, so Nick approached probably over a year ago or early in 2022 about what they were thinking of doing down at Seven Acre. And I think mid, mid early summer then Ben and Kyle came and were talking about adding on to not just taking our milk, but they were talking about taking our beef. So taking uh, dairy cows that have been kind of older, been put on pasture, and then that meat, you know, being, they, they call it pasture prime, you know, so, you know, the kind of play on words, but we're older cows out on pasture and, the, and they just, they said that that's like some of the best meat, some of the best steaks that they've found. Been a dairy farmer with my dad. We farm here, my parents, Tom Vicky, and me, Joe, and my wife, Sarah, and our three girls, Peyton, Braylon, and Reagan, farm here. Um, I've been a farmer since 2008, since I graduated college and been back here full time. So we milk 65 Holsteins, we do have one jersey, um, but our main thing is, is selling milk from the cows. So that's what, we're, that's what we're after, that's what we do every day, try to really take care of the cows, cow comfort, realize that they're the ones, you know, essentially make any money. So we, that's what we put most of our time and effort into. My name's Ben Hunter and I work here at Seven Acre Dairy. So they partner with the Sarbacher farm, uh, Fisherdale farm, Fisherdale dairy, to you know, buy the milk for the ice cream base. And on top of that, we thought how cool would it be if we could connect and look back into how things were done before the agricultural revolution happened in a way that really diminished and reduced the amount of small processors that we had. This cheese co-op that we're in represents one of those small processors that communities came around, farmers were able to bring their labor and their work together and make a living off of it and build a community. And these places became so foundational to the area and the place and what they produced, the entire communities were proud of it. And that got taken away from these small towns around, you know, with the need to feed the whole world and to feed, you know, more and more. We have a real vision to look into the place and the people of this area, especially from the 1880s to like the 1940s. Uh, we've been doing that with the kitchen and the uh, cafe, but we're also looking at how did they bring in animals and how did they work with meat. And one small thing we've done at this restaurant is we've made a commitment to use whole animals. 
So the thing about these dairy cows, the idea is they've put in these lives that have developed beef and developed a really, really remarkable flavor that communities were built around and culinary traditions were created around. But what we've done instead is we take these animals that are lactating, and instead of putting them back out to pasture and regaining some of that grazing animal sort of characteristics, we send them right off to a coal facility. We decided that we were overlooking a huge amount of value and the price for these dairy beef is not crazy. Like we're able to bring in a dairy beef and we give the farmers a significant amount more than they would get for sending it off to the coal facility. We're able to bring that in. We're also able to pay for that cow to have a retirement. If we give it four or five months of pasture or barn hay or whatever after the milking life of this cow is done. We see these transfers of the fat and the flavors redeveloped and moved around and it's good beef. The other thing that's really key to this whole process is we have a full-time butcher. Anna is amazing and she receives these whole or half animals in from our processor who comes to the farm and does the harvest and then takes it to chill. She picks those up and she breaks them down into primals and then into subprimals and then she puts our loins and our steaks into an aging program. We provide our ground beef for all of our burgers and all of our meatloafs and all of our uh, like that kind of stuff. And then we have these amazing steaks that are remarkable. And the thing is we have to do a little bit more work to trim them and to age them, but that is the respect that these animals deserved. They put this time, this life in, and we have a partnership there and so our job is to treat them well not only in the end of their life, but also after their life is over. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm the meat program manager here at Seven Acre. I've spent my entire career in the local meat industry, uh, working in small mom and pop shops, as well as a local grocery co-op. I've been a meat cutter for the last 10 years, and as of about two years ago, have started to specialize in whole animal butchery. I started in March of this year and came on to kind of head up the whole program and make sure it's running smoothly. I think it gives us a much better understanding uh, when you're able to actually go and meet these animals, meet the farmer that raised it, and all of those sorts of things. So it, it's a connection that butchers almost never get. Uh, most meat comes in a box and you'll never know necessarily even where it com comes from, particularly. Um, so I think that goes a long way in allowing me to be able to really respect the whole process as opposed to just pulling some steaks out and portion cutting them. I was definitely skeptical about dairy beef going into it. I had never specifically eaten it. I'm sure I've had it at fast food places and things like that, but my general perception was that it's kind of what gets turned into dog food and those fast food hamburgers. I didn't really know that it was something people could eat and enjoy, so I think the perception of it seems to be, in general, that it's sort of low quality or tough, old, lean meat, and it simply isn't the case with what we're doing. Uh, given enough time on pasture, the animal can actually develop really great, incredible marbling and flavor. And I think that paired with the mindful preparation that our kitchen does really allows us to have a very unique, rich product that you can't get anywhere else. I think it really gets the most possible use out of an animal and the land and the time spent feeding and raising it for the farmer. Uh, it's really like a dual purpose sort of thing. Uh, by the time that animal has lived its life, it's not only given us milk and things like that, but also meat. Natural harvest brings the slaughter right to the farm and right at the source, ultimately taking the most stress away from the situation as possible. Uh, traditionally, when animals go to processing plants to be slaughtered, they oftentimes have to travel sometimes even hundreds of miles to get there, which of course is stressful on the animal. Um, and when they arrive, they have to hang out in holding pens, sometimes for a day or more, uh, with all these other animals that they've never met before, and it's usually pretty confined spaces. Uh, and then when their time comes to be slaughtered, it 
can be any number of setups, but typically they have a long walk down a scary hallway. All of that is pretty traumatic, I would think, for animals. Um, there's not a lot of ways around it other than this on farm slaughter, which is starting to be more popularized, I think, and people are starting to be a little more aware of the whole process. The dairy program is beneficial for all parties involved, which is really cool and also pretty unique in a farmer-restaurant relationship. Uh, we're able to build systems that work for everybody and make it so that we can best utilize every part of the animal. What's really exciting to me at Seven Acre is to be able to continue to grow what we have here, to be able to continue to offer new connections between customers and dairy farmers, offer new connections between eaters and the dairy products that we're going to be developing here that we probably can't even think of, but just knowing who I am as a person and knowing who the leadership team is here, like we're always going to be pushing that. What's the new food product? What's the new way of preparation? And how can we use this, again, this incredibly remarkable building, its history, this place, our land here, to be able to help reach more people and grow new markets and have people connect not only with each other, right, here at Seven Acre, to bring people together to community, but to connect people again to this remarkable industry that we have here in Wisconsin uh, that is dairy. One of the things that like, you know, we found out, right, is that this product, there's a lot of milk here. Like our two farms next door produce a lot of milk and they have the opportunity to produce a lot of this dairy beef. And if we can move more of their milk and we can move more of their dairy beef, we have the opportunity to really improve their lives.